Okay, so this is uh, short term scheduling, chapter 15. Huh? And um, so we're going to cover this as much as possible today. Right. Uh, we have been talking about uh, until now is uh, aggregate planning, aggregate planning, and then uh, uh, master production scheduling, right? It's planning uh, stage, planning, a lot of planning on how how much uh, to produce and when to meet the deadlines. So, so this is uh, much more detail, further detail into the production and also the manufacturing or even uh, scheduling for services. Okay, so it's a short term scheduling. Short term scheduling means few days, you know, few days production or a few weeks so that we meet our demand, uh, customer requests. Okay, so imagine, uh, you know, all airlines, you know, but today we are all airlines are on, you know, many, many pro, uh, airlines are on the ground because of COVID. But if we look at before COVID, we have, we, are, we think that airlines have to actually schedule their daily flights. You know, for example, Air Asia, they have to schedule their flights from Kuala Lumpur to uh, Jakarta or Kuala Lumpur to uh, Tokyo, or even, uh, you know, they have local, even local flights in Malaysia. So this is, they, they have uh, how many aircraft and they have crew and they need to schedule actually. They need to actually, for example, if you just look into uh, crew scheduling, how many staff is going to work, when are they going to work, which days, which flights. So this is short term scheduling. Also, when you talk about uh, in uh, university, in university also, when you start semester, then we need to schedule classes. We need to schedule rooms and also lecturers. So this is short-term scheduling. So we, we need to dis, uh, decide, you know, we have very limited capacity. For example, in, in uh, you know, in such, some universities, probably you have only 50 classrooms or 40 classrooms. And we slot add that into eight, eight to 940, 940 to, you know, 12 and so on. So we have how many slots a day? So you need to actually uh, uh, do that uh, scheduling, okay? And of course, uh, we have computers nowadays, but, but we have to think about, you know, how we can actually, uh, the basics, what is the fundamental behind the, the scheduling. So in, in terms of schedule, scheduling, so we want uh, uh, faster, because in, in production, you, you have to actually think about how to deliver the goods to the customers as promised. If you promise 10 days, you have to deliver. If you promise five days, you have to deliver. Okay, and uh, for this short term scheduling, we have to, we are going to focus on process focus facilities. I'll explain to you later on. But I think you know already process focus or job shop. Job shop, um, there are many orders, kind different kind of orders and there are limited uh, resources, okay? <coughs> right, um, well, so we'll go look into scheduling issues and then process focus. And I'm going to introduce you a few techniques few techniques which involve a simple calculation, okay, simple calculation and also some algorithm. Algorithm means uh, the um, uh, steps, okay, steps required before we derive to the optimum solution or the scheduling that we actually want. Okay, and also the, the idea of loading jobs. Uh, okay. So there is a difference between short-term scheduling, capacity planning, aggregate planning, and master schedule. So we have done all those already. So this is the almost the final uh, topic regarding the uh, you know operations, uh, production planning and control, or operations planning and control. Right from aggregate planning, master schedule, uh, capacity planning, and short-term scheduling. Now. Uh, then we'll, 
I'm not going to ask you to draw the gun chart loading and scaling. I'm just going to show you. Okay, gun chart is one of the most common, most common method in scheduling. Okay, it's uh, well try and error and also uh, logic and also you know there there are uh, steps. And this is the method I'm going to teach you assignment method for loading jobs. Okay, so I'm going to. Uh, you, you'll be able to apply the assignment method eh, for loading jobs. And also another method, okay, I'm going to also uh, introduce to you priority sequencing rules, first come, first serve, due date, and so on. And also uh, Johnson's rule. So these three things, assignment method, sequencing rules, and Johnson's rule, these three, three main methods. Eh. Uh, the other one, I'll just uh, you know, briefly only explain. So about 10% of Delta flight are disrupted per year, half because of weather. So airline industry is very uh, complicated, complex, and scheduling is uh, very important. Uh, and poor scheduling will result into losses. That's why AASIA says, you know, uh, Tony Fernandez, you make money when the plane is on the air. <laughs> when the plane is on the air, that's when airlines make money. Uh, that's why now they are not making money because all the planes are on the ground. <laughs> all the all the aeroplanes are on the ground. It's not it's not flying. Okay, that's when the planes are on the ground, <clears throat> meaning they are now. On yes, they are airport. not flying. They are not earning money. They are not earning money. So they are in, uh, you know, uh, losing money. Yeah? Okay, I'm losing money. Right. Uh, so so the cost uh, in lost revenue. Uh, into overtime pay because if you have uh, uh, late schedule, uh, no, poor scheduling delays, so this will actually result into uh, uh, compensation to customers and so on. Okay, so they have this uh, control uh, operation control center to change and uh, keep flights flowing as in terms of scheduling, and uh, from that they can save that uh, well save the airline if they have. They have good scheduling. They will save a lot of uh, their uh, what do you call costs. Eh? So the the objective of uh, scheduling is to allocate and prioritize demand. That means we have limited resources. We have only two machines, for example. So which job that comes in should be done first? Okay, thing like this. Thing like. You know, you go to, uh, especially process-based, uh, process-based uh, what do you call facilities. You know, when you go to custom-made uh, suits, suits, and also shirts, customized, they they have very few uh, machines. They you know, it's based on order, and that's it. That's why they say, okay, promise date is okay. I can be ready by this date. Okay, so this, these dates are based on their, you know, when they can allocate their machines to the job that comes in. Okay, so you, you, must, you must think about allocation and prioritizing demand to the available facilities. Okay, uh, of course, demand is uh, depend on customer orders as well as forecast. Eh? We, can, we have seen that before, the demand is based on uh, what do you call forecast and customer orders? Okay, why why is it important for short term scheduling? Because uh, effective and efficient scheduling is uh, can make the organization uh, competitive. You know, it provides competitive advantage to the company. If if there is poor scheduling, that means the uh, you know the the resources that you have, the machines that you as yeah, that you have. Maybe we'll have a lot of idle time. Idle time means not doing anything idle, okay? So effective and efficient scheduling, faster movement of goods through the facility means better use of assets and lower costs. You don't want the machine to be idle. You want machine to be used. And minimum idle time, eh? okay? Um, so you also have additional capacity resulting from faster throughput. If you have a faster throughput, Throughput means the time that it comes in to the facility, factory, and it go out. If the throughput, for example, is slow, 
then you have a lot of work in progress wip work in progress in the you know in the company in the facilities okay for example you have 10 orders that come in and you know by end of the month only two orders is uh, fulfilled the remaining eight orders is still playing around in the factory playing around you know that's uh, you know not uh, not being completed so so that is uh, typical of many uh, developing countries facilities not multinational okay like in bangladesh you no know, the garment factory is multinational it's not it's not uh, your own uh, our own local okay if you go to local yes. companies you will see the work in progress yes. work in progress is uh, is waste is waste in the organization and um, so so you have uh, you know your throughput then you can give, deliver faster good result uh, good schedule result in more dependable deliveries that means if you have good schedules you can actually uh, you know deliver on time and you have to think deliver it depends on your transportation you know for example the the trucks have arrived and your consignment is not ready for delivery there's a gap so it is waste okay it's waste so scheduling is so some of the scheduling deals with the timing uh, scheduling deals with the timing of operations that means we have to a time of operation that uh, will utilize our uh, machines okay our facilities and also scheduling result, uh, is involved in uh, the task is the allocation and prioritization of demand okay it depends on uh, you know how we give prioritization for example first come first serve wherever the job comes first we process it but that will you know if you if the process takes longer time then you're going to backlog those jobs which probably have a slower processing time a shorter processing time so so how do we prioritize okay so there's the uh, factors that we have to think about is uh, either you think forward scheduling that means from now we uh, schedule uh, our jobs uh, forward okay or like backward scheduling if you have seen in mrp is actually backward scheduling you, you know you think forward then you try to uh, assign and also try to load the job as you work out the schedule backwards okay that's that's uh, forward and backward uh, scheduling um, but of, pro of provided you know your demand provided the the demand is known then you can plan okay you can you can schedule uh, you know either forward or backward okay uh, and then the the factors for scheduling also is either finite or infinite loading that means finite loading means your facility is uh, limited that means if the this machine is used up you have to wait until the machine is finished then only you can load a job okay but infinite loading means uh, but in reality there is actually uh, finite loading okay because you only have uh, uh, limited amount of resources if you remember when we did mrp the assumption was infinite loading actually mrp infinite loading because you didn't think about the machines you only say make 100 or 500 for that week okay you don't you don't uh, consider the limitation of the of the uh, facilities or the machine okay uh, and the other thing is the criteria for sequencing jobs okay so these are the each, these factors that must be put into uh, consideration okay when you try to uh, do your scheduling okay or when you want to decide the uh, the kind of um, uh, algorithm that you're going to use. Okay, so these are some of the scheduling decisions. All these have to be scheduled. Eh? A lot of things, a lot of things has to be scheduled. For example, you know, in uh, in Japan, because of the frequency, they increase the frequency of delivery for 
you know, convenience store, 7-Eleven or Family Mart. That's why you see, you know, a continuous uh, small delivery trucks, uh, delivery deliver like uh, uh, food, eh? sandwiches or even onigiris. So probably they have, you know, uh, scheduled, but it's very frequent, eh? very frequent. Because they don't have place to keep the stocks, minimum storage. Okay, if you see the, the, the stores are small, so they have to actually have you know, a much more frequent uh, delivery. So they need scheduling. That needs you know, scheduling of the delivery. So all these are require uh, scheduling. Eh? Uh, that's why I say just now, eh, it's university, classroom and audio visual equipment, student and instructor schedules, graduate and undergraduate courses. How will you actually match them? Eh? Okay, so you can think of all these uh, places in which you need to do scheduling. Now, so that's where, if you still remember, you know, in chapter seven, which we did last year, last semester, eh, capacity planning, capacity mean long term, change in facility, change in equipment, then aggregate planning. Aggregate planning is in terms of uh, utilization, uh, facility utilization quarterly or monthly, okay? Then you go for master scheduling. Of course, this is uh, especially for um, what you call uh, product-based uh, product uh, system. So today we're talking about short-term scheduling, which is shorter, much, much shorter. So long-term, medium-term, intermediate-term, short-term, days, hours, minutes. We're talking about days, hours, minutes. We are talking about work center loading and also job sequencing, okay? Uh, which will actually go into work centers. So work centers, for example, assembly of bicycles, that is work center, or doing welding, that is work center, okay? So that's the, uh, you know, how in real life, it, the, the scheduling uh, uh, system flows, okay? Okay, forward and backward scheduling, forward scheduling starts as soon as the requirement are known. Well, they just plan forward, okay? That's uh, like my, like our, our schedule classes. Okay? This is forward planning, right? <laughs> okay, forward planning. Uh, and it produces feasible schedule. Uh, maybe it will not meet the due date, especially in production, because you will actually depend on the resources. And forward planning also frequently result in build up of work in process. So that's that's uh, the disadvantage of you know forward scheduling. Just simply follow whatever comes in, and we actually process it. It's against uh, backward scheduling. You begin with the due date and you work backwards. Okay, so due date known, then you work backwards. So you know when to start for a certain job, okay? And of course, it depends on how many processes it require, how many steps, how many machines, okay? Then uh, uh, schedule is produced by working backwards. Resources may not be available to accomplish the schedule, so you need to adjust. So in real life production, it's actually very, very dynamic. Dynamic, the word is dynamic, but it's actually very, complex, very messy, messy. You know the word messy. Things have to change. Change, uh, change them because of resources not available. Okay, resources not available, machine not there. So we need to actually uh, reschedule. Okay, reschedule. Um, so many times these approaches you need to combine uh, and also you need, that I mean, you can combine forward and backward scheduling. You have to think forward as well backwards to develop a trade-off, a trade-off between capacity constraints and customer expectation or delivery, okay? So you need to actually balance that uh, capacity constraint. So many organizations have the, uh, uh, you know, capacity, that means the machines and the equipments, right? limited by that and also time we don't have uh, we do not have 50 
hours in a day. We only have 24 hours, 24 hours in a day. Nah, Yakub, we don't have uh, yes. 50 hours. So, time is always limited. Time is always, uh, you know, um, chasing us. Uh. Okay, finite and infinite loading, I mentioned just now already that finite loading assigns work up to the capacity of the workstation. Okay, so when all works get done, then you move on to the next job. But this will push, push out due dates. That means because it is limited, then you have to actually, you know, uh, tell your customer, oh no, we cannot meet this deadline because we still have job to do. So we need, can you, can you uh, accept uh, another week, for example, not the request. Huh? So this need to be uh, adjusted. So infinite loading does not consider capacity because all due dates are met. Uh, but this capacity may have to be adjusted provided the capacity is there, okay? Because it's just infinite loading. Eh? Uh, in, in real life, it is uh, not possible, not, it is quite difficult actually. Eh? Okay, uh, when, when we schedule, we need to think about what are the criteria I've already mentioned just now about the work in process. One of the criteria that companies always consider and also try to uh, measure. Okay, the word is measure. You want to minimize your completion time. That means you try to make sure that all jobs are completed on time. If there is a delay, then you have to, you know, uh, you can measure what is the, for example, average delay time, for example, okay? So that's one measure. Another measure is maximize utilization of facilities. You can measure percentage of utilization, okay? If the utilization is uh, 90%, 50%, then you know you still have uh, opportunity for getting jobs, okay? Or scheduling new jobs. Work in process, minimize work in process inventory. I've already mentioned a little bit just now. You know, eight jobs come in, only two jobs completed. So the remainder are actually work in process in the system. So it's not going out. There's no throughput. Eh? Uh, and minimize customer waiting time. Okay. So customers uh, uh, have, uh, you know, certain. Uh, Requirements, okay, requirements. Okay, now we'll uh, look at some of the things. What else? Uh, so different approaches for different processes. Uh, process focus, scheduling. Uh, this is where I'm going to actually focus uh, for the scheduling. Actually, process focus facility, job shops, okay, job shops. Repetitive is based on, uh, you just load, it's easier. Finite loading with a focus on generating a forward-looking schedule. It's just simple, okay? My experience, okay, for, uh, for assembly line is very simple. You just load on, you just uh, move. But the most difficult is actually process focus facilities for scheduling, okay? Uh, no, you make cars, you just load on the production line and it's actually going to, uh, what do you call, follow the schedule according to the cycle time and so on. So for product focus is also a bit easier because you're, you're also looking, uh, it's a forward looking schedule, finite loading, finite loading, because if you make uh, bottles, you know, drinks, so the automatic line will just move and move and also complete the product or even uh, potato chips, simple scheduling. <laughs> Simple. I mean, you just load the machine and it will actually run. And you schedule for, for example, certain volume depending on your your finite loading. Okay, because there is a known setup time and run times. Okay. Uh, so normally, product focus and repetitive facility assembly lines are quite straightforward. Uh, based on the forecast, based on your master production schedule. Okay, then you can actually do the scheduling. 
but for process focus, because process focus depends on the quantity, the volume requested by the clients or the customers, or even in hospital patients. So this is process focus. And schedules are often due date, due date and loading refined by finite loading also. For example, foundries, machine shops, a tailor, you know, cabinet shop, printing shop, printing. You go to a printing press. You, you want to print books. It's not the same quantity. For example, this book, the publisher say, okay, print 1,000. This book, print 500. Size different. Time different. So that is process, eh? process focus. So process focus uh, will have this, uh, what you call many inputs, okay, number of inputs. Uh, so it is, and this is repeating the same, uh, what you call slide just now. Eh? So process workers, high variety, production differ considerably, uh, scheduling, scheduling incoming orders without violating capacity uh, constraint. That means you try to schedule the jobs that come in and you have your capacity uh, limitation. Eh? And scheduling can be complex. Now, there is uh, this concept called loading jobs. Okay? So loading means you assign jobs so that uh, your uh, cost, your idle time, and your completion time are minimized. So that's what you call uh, as uh, loading. Eh? One, uh, one, there's two types of uh, loading. One is capacity oriented, depends on the capacity. And the other is assigning specific jobs to the work centers. That means you assign jobs to whatever work centers. Work centers can be machine, can be assembly centers, can be, you know, it's work, you know, specific job to be done at the work. Um, so the first method in which you can actually uh, do scheduling, okay, it's called input output control. I'm not going to go to this detail actually, but this is, uh, this is, it will identify overloading and underloading condition. Overloading means too much, too many, okay? And it is using uh, what you call as uh, conduit. Conduit is actually constant work in progress. Constant work in progress. Cuts, okay? Constant work in progress cuts, which monitor whether the uh, amount of work in the center is actually um, completed or not, okay? So it's actually a, uh, what they call a cut, eh? conduit cut. And it will actually follow the batch or follow the, uh, the job, okay? Follow the job. When the job is finished, the cut is going to be released and returned to the initial workstation, which actually will authorize a new batch. That means once the batch is finished, then we'll actually, you know, allow the uh, process to be uh, what you call uh, loaded back. Eh? Lo loading can be done when the process has been completed. So it's like this. Uh, this is actually uh, an example of input output control. Okay, whereby you know the uh, <clears throat> explanation is this. Uh, the uh, cumulative uh, cumulative change in the backlog is zero based on uh, week ending. Okay, these are all week endings, week completion of the uh, what do you call uh, the plan plan uh, input, actual input, and the plan output as well as the actual output. Okay, and so because of uh, you know if there is uh, for example negative. Um, backlog, so they need to recover it the next week or they need to recover it during overtime and so on, okay? So this is just input output control example of uh, uh, work centers and processes, okay? Uh, okay, there, there is an example in book, I think, I'm not going to go to this, this uh, detail for this. 
just that we can uh, monitor the amount, we monitor the amount, and also we need to make action, take action so that we actually reduce the uh, backlog. Okay, backlog means you do not meet the requirement. You you haven't finished the uh, production or you haven't fulfilled the customer's uh, requirement. So you need to actually fulfill that. Okay. So you can uh, fulfill the uh, backlog by correcting the performances or increasing the capacity uh, or increasing or reducing input to the work center. Okay. If you reduce the input, that means uh, you will be able to uh, fulfill whatever there is a backlog. Okay. If you keep on increasing the input and there is a continuous a backlog, then you are not going to actually uh, meet the customers, uh, what we call due dates. Okay, so this is one one technique. Eh? It's, it's input output control. Very, this is very common. Have you heard of gun charts before? Gun charts is actually a scheduling tool. So it's a it is a loading chart whereby you show the loading and idle time of machine, department. It's just a schedule. Without realizing, probably, you know, this is called a gun chart. Eh? It replaces the relative workloads over time. This is a gun chart. This is a gun chart. You know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This is a schedule, but it is actually a gun chart. Okay? So this work center or this person, for example, uh, person A, person B, so when is he going to be scheduled? Okay. When his for example, shift, nurses, hospital, or doctors, you can actually uh, load, uh, you know, use a gun, gun load chart eh, to do this. Um, of course, this is depending on um, um, whatever is available, then you uh, fit in inside there. And of course, there are there are algorithm and there are steps to complete this. Eh? Uh, let me see. So you display reality workloads, schedule chart, monitor jobs in progress. You can use this to monitor jobs in progress as well. But you need to be updated eh, frequently to account for changes. So gun charts are, um, need to be uh, updated eh, because it must show the the uh, you know the actual and the current updated and current this is a gun chart uh, schedule also you can use this gun chart if you have done project management probably you also this seen this before and there are meanings to this start of an activity this is start this is end this is scheduled activity allowed and this is uh, actual work progress okay so if you see here, uh, this is behind schedule. This is ahead of schedule because the amount of completion time, it should be here only, but you know, we have already actual work progress because actual progress is, for example, today, now, eh, now, today is day five. Day five, okay, of course this is done, this is okay, this is completed. Behind schedule, ahead of schedule. Understand? Okay. But this is, uh, you, the problem is Ganchan is you need to update it. If it is daily, then daily. You need to update it daily and see the progress. Huh? So that's Ganchan. Okay, so I'm not going to be focusing on that, the other two, okay, just now, input, output, uh, input, uh, input chart, and also the Ganchan. This, this is something that I want you to uh, learn eh, to, to understand. There is a method, this, this uh, is called assignment method. Okay, this is a scheduling method. It is called assignment method. It is a kind of linear programming model that assign tasks or jobs to resources. Okay, even though it looks, uh, you know, a bit, um, complicated, you know, it's not really complicated. It's just the logic and eh? the logic behind it. You have to see after this. So this is a LP model, linear programming. 
idea is can I assign jobs to resources? Jobs, resources. Okay. And you want to minimize cost or time. So we have two uh, factors. One is cost and or time, either one. In assignment method, the assumption is that you can only assign one job to one machine. So this is uh, you know, the, the, the assumption. And also the problem that you have. The problem is that you only have, for example, you only have machine and you have jobs that is coming in. So what we do now is that for any assignment method, you need to do some uh, data collection a little bit, okay? You need to build a table of cost or time, which is related to the particular jobs or assignment, eh? jobs or assignments. Assignment means jobs or work, okay? So for example, I've already collected data. This is a printing uh, work, okay? Uh, okay, we have three jobs. Three jobs, jobs one. So there's uh, three jobs. And uh, three, this is a very simple example. Like it's three uh, centers, okay, work centers. Or this is three people, basically. So it can be work centers, it can be people, it can be anyone, <laughs> anything. Eh? So A, B, C, A, B, C. And I have this cost here. 11, 8, 9, 14, 10, 12, 6, 11, 7. So for job, this to be done by this, this is the cost associated. Eh? So I have this, I have this table uh, and you need to actually follow the rules that is set up. Eh? So the first rule is that, so the assignment method actually involves adding and subtracting appropriate numbers in the table. So uh, adding and subtracting. So the rule says that first uh, for the uh, for the rows, see, for the rows. So the explanation will follow after this. I'm just going to explain to you the basic rule. For every row, find the smallest cost for row, find the smallest cost and minus that cost from all of them. Okay, for example, row uh, the first row. First row is actually the first job, okay? And there are three uh, processors, I mean three people. Six is the smallest. So basically you need to minus 11 minus six and you have to change this number, okay? Change it into the new result. Change, change. Do it for all rows, okay? So you do it for rows. The effect is that you will see the one of the rows, of course, when you minus the same number, you get zero. For example, six minus six is zero, right? And, and uh, eight minus eight is zero, or seven minus seven is zero. So do it for all rows. Find the smallest number in the row, deduct that number. Then you do it for columns. This is Simon method. It is actually, you know, the mathematics, we can refer that uh, to past work that has been done. Eh? So you, you do it for columns also until you get the total number of intersection of all the zeros to equal the columns that actually you have. Eh? Okay, let's go through. I think we'll show the... So create zero opportunity cost by repeatedly subtracting the lowest cost from each row and column. So what you are doing actually is uh, we're trying to find uh, the opportunity, zero opportunity cost for each of the... Uh, jobs. Okay, so that's what you do for rows, then you do it for column. Then you draw the minimum number of lines. Draw means physically draw, eh? draw the lines and uh, vertical and horizontal line needed to cover all the zeros. Okay, so you need to draw the lines which is required to cover all the zeros in the table. If the number of lines equals either the rows or the columns, proceed to step four, otherwise proceed to step three. Step three is you keep on repeating the remaining uncovered, not covered by a line until you get 
you know, zeros. Okay, basically you're trying to create so that you get optimum, all there are zeros. Eh? Uh, so optimum assignments are at zero locations in the table. Have you done this before, assignment methods? Jacob, have you done this before? Assignment methods? Hongli, have you done this before? No. Assignment method, I didn't do this. Never mind, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. But this is the steps. That means the first, the first step is actually to find zeros in the rows and column, then draw the line, minimum line, then if the number is already equal to the number of rows in the table, then it's optimum. If it is not, keep on repeating uncovered, uncovered numbers. Okay, Cover, uh, uncovered mean lines are not drawn. Eh? So it's like this. Uh, so this was the initial table, the first table. Step one is rows. How do you get these numbers? I mentioned just now. Row one, smallest is six. So you deduct this. 11 minus six is five. 14 minus six is eight. Six minus six is zero. Are you following? Yes. Then you go Everything to the next minus row. C, why, Professor? No, no. Find the smallest value in the row. In the row, 11, 14, 6. The smallest is 6. Correct? 6, okay. So you deduct the smallest number in the row, okay, uh, for all the numbers, for all the values, 11 minus all 6. all the values, okay. Uh, 8, uh, 14, uh, for all the values. Do that the same for the next row. 8 minus 8 is 0, 10 minus 8 is 2, 11 minus 8 is 3. Yeah. Okay? And you do that also for the third row. So here, 7 is the smallest. 7 is the, the minimum. 2, 5, so, 0. Okay. So you start here, 9 minus 7 is 2, 12 minus 7 is 5, 7 minus 7 is 0. Okay? Sure. So what you do now is actually draw line, draw line that cover the zero. For example, what? So this is one line. This will cover this uh, zero for the first job and zero for the third job. And you draw a second line. How many lines? Uh, it says draw on the zero only. So you cannot draw five, eight, eight to five. Okay, so there is only two lines. Uh. Two lines is not yet optimum because we need three lines because there is three rows and three columns. Three. Okay? Following? So it is still not optimal. Yes. But when if, it is not if, optimal. But, sorry, why, why the C line is not needed? It's needed three lines. We haven't finished the three lines. We only have two lines now. We managed to actually come up with two lines. Two is less than three. Therefore, not <laughs> optimum yet. Not yet optimum. So we need to go another round, which is find the smallest number in the remaining numbers. Two, five, eight, five, one, two, three, four. It's not line. So from here, the smallest is two. So from all these numbers, deduct the smallest number again. So the next step, because we are not optimum, we need to go for a second round, okay? Which is like this, which is now, uh, okay, sorry, sorry, I missed one step, which is actually uh, column, eh? column. Uh, we so we finish we finish finish row okay we finish row so we need to actually uh, before we draw the line we need to actually find the smallest now in the column column eh? column so there is zero here so this doesn't change there is two here so this will change so this column now eight minus two is six 
2 minus zero, uh, 2 is 0. 5 minus 2 is 3. Then we get this 603. Correct? 603. Okay? 603. So do the row, then do the column. And then only you draw the line. Okay? Forget about that draw through line. Eh? Forget about that two line just now. Now only we draw the line. Now only we draw the line. That means one covering this and covering this. One line. Okay. And covering this and covering this. Still again, okay, we only have two lines, which is not optimum yet. Not optimum. So what we need to do is find the smallest number between the remaining uncovered line. Okay, uncovered, five, six, two, three. So we deduct that smallest value on the remaining uncovered numbers. So this will become zero, this will become one, this will become four, and this will become three. Okay? Right? So what I've done is just now, because only two lines are needed to cover all the zeros, the solution is not optimum, then you need to actually, like I said just now, the smallest uncovered number is two. So this is subtracted from all the other uncovered numbers, which is five, six, two, three. Okay. And added to numbers at the intersection of lines. So now we become three, uh, zero, three, zero, four, one. Okay. So you, you, after subtraction, then you have this new table. Okay, new table. Then only you can draw uh, another line, which is a, because three lines are needed, the solution is now optimum. Okay, optimal. And assignments can be made. Assignments can be made, that means we can assign now which job goes to which person. Now we can do assignment because there is uh, three lines with zeros. Okay. So if you do the assignment, now we can only assign one job to one person. We can assign uh, two jobs. Okay. So what is the combination? Can you think which is the combination? R34 should be given to which type setter? from this uh, table, okay, because zero is the, you know, the, the lowest of 30 cores. Okay, Liang, where should R34 be assigned to? Assignment. Should I give it to A? Uh, give it to C. Yes, give it to C, exactly. Okay. Because I cannot give it to A and B because there is still opportunity cost three and four. There is still values there. So this is the cheapest. The cheapest is assigned to the zero. Assigned to the zero. So this is the only, only one. So C assigned to R34. Okay. Then you have to assign uh, SC66 and T50. Zero, 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 one. So, T50 cannot be assigned to B. So, T50 should be assigned to Yakob. Yes, Professor. T50 should be can, can be assigned, not should be assigned, can be assigned to. Because there is, uh, this is still one year. Okay. You can only assign to here. You cannot be assigned C because C has been assigned. Understand? C cannot be. Uh, what do you call a job 34 cannot be assigned to B or A because there is this you assign to those value of zero. Okay. So the final solution is this the final assignment assigning the uh, work. So start by assigning R34 to worker C as this is the only possible assignment for worker C. Uh, worker C cannot do other things because uh, it's costlier. Job T50 must go to worker A. 
as worker C is already assigned, you cannot assign to worker C, okay? And this leaf S is C for worker B. So the assignment is R34 to C, S66 to B, T52, A. Okay? But it doesn't stop here because you need to know the original table, go back to the original table, and you'll see that this is actually 9 plus 10 plus 6. Okay? If you see here, logic, right? Logic, 9 plus 10 plus 6 from the cost table. I mean, you cannot, for example, cheapest. Uh, cheapest is, for example, if you sign R34 to A, 11, and then uh, SC6 to B, 10, 11 plus 10 plus 7 is 28. Okay? This is not cheapest. So you, 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 you do through the assignment method, you can actually uh, determine the uh, cost, okay? All right. Uh, it's almost nine o'clock, but anyway, let me just, uh, any questions about this assignment method? After this, you know, I'll ask you to do one question so that you can have an idea of uh, hands-on how to do it. Eh? It's, it's, it's straightforward. How to find the minimum cost here, like uh, because 16, 9 is 25. Yeah. How, they how do you get it? Count? Because remember here, we assign that, we assign R34 to C. This is, this is the, the, the calculation, okay, the assignment. So we assign R34 to C. Uh, S66 to B. T52 A. But remember, we started here because we started saying that this is the cost. The cost evolved in actually doing the, the work. Okay? To do uh, for R34 to do at C is cost us $6. Okay? S66 at A is $8. So this is the, the cost, cost table. But from the cost table, we did some algorithm. We did some manipulation, assignment method. It's called assignment method. And we have assigned this R34 to C, S66 to B, T52 A. But this zero cost come from the assignment method. But the initial cost table, this is the initial cost table. It is uh, the minimum cost should be 6 because R34 is assigned to C. Cost actual is 6. Plus, S66 assigned to B, which is 10. That's why 6 plus 10. And T50 plus 9, 25. Okay. Sorry, I, I don't know how to get to the B for Andama. B? How to get... Yeah, yes, the, the line of B. This line B here? This line B? Yeah, yeah yes. Four and one. How, how do we get it? Oh, how do you get this? Uh, okay, it's actually from the column. Eh? Okay, column. This, the first step, you understand? This is getting until yeah. here. Okay, now. The smallest uncovered number. So, what is the uncovered number? This is covered already. That means... All this line is already calculated. So the uncover number is five, six, five, six, two, three. Two, three. Three. Mm. So the smallest number is two. Two. two okay. uh, so two remaining numbers deduct the number. For example, minus. 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 Uh, five yeah. minus oh. two become three. Six minus okay. two become four. Okay. Okay. So from this because. column, then only it resulted into this. Uh, all have uh, you know zero. We have three three lines. Now we can draw three lines. Right. And so I think the the idea is to find the minimum cost. That is the that is the uh, the criteria. Okay. 
So when you when you schedule this to the right, you know, uh, type setter, we are minimizing our cost. Eh? So this is called the assignment method, and it is very straightforward. Eh? Can do for, for another thing, professor. <coughs> yeah. For R thirty five, you have taken R thirty four zero. Okay. Uh, R thirty four. Yes. S sixty six. There is two zero. You have taken the middle one. Why? Ah. Uh, and also T fifty has two zero. You have taken the last one. Okay. The left one. If you now we start off with where can who can do this R thirty four? First, we start with with R thirty four. Which is the cheapest? C, right? Zero. Okay. C, C, C. No, don't think about zero. C, yeah. C. R thirty four is C. C. So, so I now have two more jobs which need to be right. assigned to two percent. Yes. If I assign T uh, fifty, can I assign to C? Oh, already C is assigned. That's why. That's why. That's why you can only assign one job. Can you assign to B? Uh, can you assign to B? Cannot because no B is one here. Yeah. Yeah. So this leave only A to do the assignment. This leave only A. Yeah. Right. Okay. So if I assign this here, this here, obviously this is the remaining. You this cannot assign here. Right. You cannot sign here. Mm. Yeah. Logic. B is the remaining. Logic, logic. Okay, it's just uh, not the logic. case. Uh, okay, mm. because you already signed. Because even though there's two oh, zero here. Got it. Got it. Uh, okay. From the original cost table, we will see. Right. Um, there's two more methods which I want to. Um, okay. Can we have a few uh, minutes, Professor? Again? Can we have a few minutes break? Okay, I, uh, you'll take uh, five minutes uh, coffee break. Only five minutes. Give me five minutes okay, five. today. Okay. Okay, okay the next uh, method uh, involving sequencing jobs. Okay, sequencing jobs. So in sequencing job, we try to specify the work uh, the order in which jobs should be performed at work centers. And we use these uh, priority rules. Priority rules uh, to dispatch or to sequence the jobs. Okay, sequence uh, which uh, should be uh, done first. So there is four priority rules. First is, uh, we call it FCFS. First come, first serve. Whatever comes first, we're going to actually do the job. Secondly, uh, we can also sequence according to shortest processing time. Rather than first come, first serve, we say we're going to do the work according which job is the shortest, okay? Require lesser, lesser time. Or we follow earliest due date. That means jobs which, uh, which is actually uh, promised uh, to, to the customer, the due dates. Or we, you know, we use the longest processing time. Okay, so these are priority rules that we can actually. Let, let's look at an example. So we want to apply these four rules, four sequencing rules, to these five jobs, and uh, assume that these jobs arrive according to this uh, A, B, C, D, E. So this is actually uh, if. If we use first come, first serve, then A, B, C, D, E should be assigned, okay? Then we can, we can actually measure uh, uh, the effectiveness and so on. So we need some measures, uh, some performance uh, criteria in order to measure these uh, four popular sequencing rules, okay? Uh, okay, I think... Uh, it's not mentioned here. There, there is actually four, four rules. Uh, average completion time, 
average uh, utilization and then average number of jobs. Okay, look, you will see this after, after this when you do the calculation. So assume that we follow the first come first serve. First come first serve, A, B, C, D, E. So we do A, B, C, D, and E. This is the required uh, uh, processing time, six, six time units, okay, six hours or six days. So let's say days, okay, six days, two days, and so on. And uh, you can calculate the number of days here, 28. Flow time is actually the time that starts from time zero. And you know, this is the flow time. Flow time means you need six units of time for A to be completed. So the flow time until B is completed is A, right? Because six plus, plus two is eight. Eight plus eight is 16. So this is the flow time, C, D, and uh, E, until uh, what they call, it is actually completed on uh, the uh, 77, uh, the, the total flow time actually, eh? okay, this is the total flow time. Job due date, we can see from the previous table that this is the job due dates. It is uh, on, it is due on day eight. It's due on day six. This is the due dates, okay? So if you do this, uh, job due date is eight, six, and so on. So this is a measure which is actually job lateness. Job lateness is actually uh, flow time minus due date. Okay, so there is no late here. There's no lateness, zero lateness. Uh, job due date is six, but the flow time is eight. So there is a two days late and so on. Okay, there is, uh, for this no lateness, this is four, this is five. So the total number of job lateness is actually 11. Okay. There will not be any odd number here. There is no negative numbers. You can negative numbers. Negative okay. numbers. Only the even number. Yeah. We're talking about lateness. So if you can deliver before that, then it is uh, no late. Okay. So, so you're, uh, not before that, there is... you're not going to consider negative numbers. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, now this, this is the uh, measure. Average completion time is sum of total flow time divided by number of jobs. So sum is 77, there is five jobs. So the average uh, completion time is 15.4 days. The utilization is given by the formula, eh? total job work time divided by the sum of total flow time. So utilization is uh, 28 divided by 77, which is actually 36.4%, of course times 100%. Eh? Average number of jobs in the system is the sum of total flow time divided by total job work time, uh, which is actually uh, inverse of this uh, utilization is 2.75 jobs, average job in the uh, system. And average job lateness is 2.2. Uh, so why we need to have this? Okay, we are going to use these four metrics to compare all the four priority rules. Remember we have first come first serve, and then we have a uh, due date, we can have uh, completion time, uh, we can have the uh, latest processing time, okay? So this is the measures. Huh? If you use first come, first serve, these are the metrics. So if I say that I'm not going to go first come, first serve, I'm going to use shortest processing time. So, social, uh, so shortest processing time will result into sequence to be B, D, A, C, E. Shortest, eh? So you, pro, you, you sequence the shortest. So two, three, six, eight, nine. Eh? So you start with job B, which requires two days. Mm. And uh, D requires three days. So the flow time becomes like B and then uh, uh, D. So this is two, this is five until uh, completion, okay? Until 28. So the total uh, flow time is 65, lesser than just now. Eh? Job due dates is, um, now we look at the job lateness. So no lateness, no lateness, 
three day learners, one day learners, five day learners, a total of nine day learners. So you measure that, you get this average completion time of 13 days, utilization matrix higher 43%, average number of jobs in the system 2.32, almost similar, but you have a lower job uh, lateness, average job lateness, okay, 1.8 days. Just now it was like, uh, it was 2.2, eh? if I'm not mistaken, 2.2, okay. So this is shortest processing time sequence, which is B, D, A, C, E. Now, if I use earliest due date, earliest due date means I want to uh, sequence according to the due dates, okay. That means due dates, uh, the first is uh, six, okay. If you look at earliest table, the first is six. Says so 8, 5, 15, 18. So this is according to the due dates. Eh? And based on that, this is the job, uh, the processing time, and you will get the flow time and the job lateness. Okay. So you have no lateness, no lateness, no lateness, one lateness, uh, five lateness, five day lateness. And the sequence is B, A, D, C, E. Okay. Not A, B, C, E, A, B, D, C, A, B, C, D, E was actually the first come first serve. So this is earliest due date. Okay. So you, you sequence the one which is actually having the, uh, the earliest due dates. Eh? So from that, if you calculate the uh, metrics, the measure, performance measures, 13.6 uh, days, utilization of 41.2%, Average number of jobs 0.43 higher now you can see higher. This is already lower already now. Average job job lateness okay 1.2 days earliest due date 1.2 days okay. And uh, uh, longest processing time. Uh, so you want to the the longer uh, first which is nine. 8632. Understand? This is uh, depend this is based on the one which is longer, you do it first. Sequence, eh? you sequence it first. Right? So that will result into uh, what you call this is the flow time. Eh? Okay, so you start E. So 0 to 9. 9 uh, days and then 17. So you see a larger flow time actually, eh? a larger total flow time. Uh, Job lateness also higher. So what do you think? Do you think lowest processing time, uh, li uh, longest processing time is a good option for sequencing your work? Huh? No, shortest processing <coughs> time. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the job lateness, 9.6 days. <laughs> 3.68 job. Uh, 20, of, of course, the uh, utilization is, uh, you know, Low, low, low utilization, 27% only utilization. So in your work, don't do the thing require the longest time first. <laughs> this is, in real life, we can practice this uh, because you have 10 things to do in, uh, in your life. Scheduling your life, do the easiest first. That's why I always advise uh, students do the, it's just the fastest. It's just it's the fastest. Right. That is, uh, and also in, it makes sense in, uh, you know. So this is a summary table of the rules and all the metrics. And if we see here, if you do some comparison and you say that, let's look at the average completion time. So average uh, completion time the uh, first, of course, the, the, the shorter the better, right? So this is, it looks like uh, shortest processing time, SPT. And a higher utilization, yeah, it's a good utilization. Average number of jobs, 2.32 is the lowest. But uh, lateness is uh, it's not really, not that good as EDD, earliest due date, yes. 1.2. Okay, yes. earliest due date. Shorter processing time, but you know it's reasonable. So, so you you decide in in your job shop, 
in your shops, in your you know in your machine shops or in your hospitals, you you decide okay which one is actually going to actually uh, reduce you know lateness, uh, reduce lateness, okay. Right. So no one sequencing rule excels on all criteria. So that's what we, we saw just now. SPT does well on minimizing flow time and number of jobs, uh, but shorter process moves long job to the end, which may result in dissatisfied customers. Yeah, these customers will have some delay uh, delivery. First come, first serve does not especially do well. So first come, first serve is not a good sequencing uh, uh, priority rule, eh? okay? And earliest due date will minimize uh, maximum lateness. You can also use another uh, measure which is actually critical ratio. Critical ratio is uh, try to, uh, it is an index, index number found by dividing the time remaining until the due date by the work time remaining on the job. That means due date minus today's date divided by the work time remaining, okay? Or work days remaining. Jobs with low ratio are scheduled ahead of job with higher critical ratio. That means you try to finish it faster. Eh? That's what happened eh? if you, you know, you focus on the uh, lower critical ratios. Eh? Uh, so it is good when the average lateness criteria is uh, considered. Eh? It performs well on average job lateness criteria. That means you are going to improve your. Uh, uh, late, you don't you don't increase your lateness actually. Eh? Okay. So for example, this is uh, currently at day twenty five, and your due date is thirty. So you have another five days. This is another three days. This is another two days. Okay. Oh, sorry, four days. Uh, this is five days. Work this. Uh, okay, sorry. Due date is 30th of the month or the date. And this is date. This is work days remaining. That means uh, the lead time or whatever time or working that is uh, available. Okay. Um, so your critical ratio is. 1.25 for A, 0.6 for B, and 1.0 for C. So the priority is do B first, then do C, then do 3. Okay? Right. So basically with critical ratio less than 1, actually if job B is late, this is actually a delay eh? behind schedule. So you want to actually push that first. Job C is on schedule because it is one. Uh, you see this sometimes used in project management as well. Project management will calculate critical ratio, how many time you know remaining okay against the due date. So if it is one, it is on schedule. Job A has some slack. Okay, some slack means it has uh, uh, extra time that can be delayed a little bit. Okay, so that's the meaning of uh, critical ratio to measure to expedite jobs which are actually late. Okay, that's called critical ratio. Uh, so critical ratio will help determine the status of the specific job and establish priorities among the job uh, on a common basis, which is actually the remaining time and uh, due dates. You will adjust priority automatically uh, and it, it's actually tracking job dynamically. You, you're actually um, uh, tracking, eh? tracking progress. So those are behind, you, you need to actually expedite it or move it faster. faster. Right, any questions? Okay, let me just, run this through, this is the, the, the final, the third, eh? the third um, sequencing technique that is used commonly. It's, it's a very simple technique actually, if you understand the logic, okay? So we want to sequence, now we want to sequence 
and jobs on two machines. This is very, this is called the Johnson's rule. It's a very straightforward because you only have two machines and you have uh, many jobs. Okay, you have 10 jobs, you can have five jobs, okay? But you have uh, two machines and it is uh, in sequence, okay? Two or more jobs that pass through the same two machines. Work machine one, machine two, or work center one, machine center two. So in Johnson rule, we want to minimize the total production time and idle time. Okay, it is uh, N2 problem, okay, because there sometimes we have uh, N jobs on M machines, okay, can have three machines, four machines, five machines, and so on. But this is a very simple, you know, uh, first step, eh? N jobs, two machines, okay, so M, M equals to two. So the, the rule is this, the rule, this is the algorithm. Algorithm, but of course, if you we if I don't show the example, you won't be able to actually see this. Eh? Okay, so you list all jobs and times for each work center. First, you must have all the jobs and the time. Only two things. Okay, job time. Of course, the you know um, the work center scheduling. Eh? So the first thing says that choose the job with the shortest activity time. Okay. So if the time is in the first work center, then schedule the job first, okay? So if it is like A, uh, work A, the time for machine one, machine two, eh? okay, there is uh, five minutes here and here it requires 10 minutes. And here it requires eight minutes or requires two minutes. So you start with A. If it is five here, then you assign to machine one. That means machine one will start to do A first. Something like that. Okay, I will show you the example after this. So shortest activity assigned to the first work center. <coughs> if the time is the first center, schedule the job first. If it is in the second work center, schedule the job last. Okay. I mean, if it is, uh, if this is not 10, this is 10, this is five, then schedule it last. Okay, not here, but last. Once the job is scheduled, it is eliminated from the list. Repeat two and three towards the center of the sequence. That means you repeat for the next job. Repeat for the next job until all the job is uh, scheduled or uh, what you call loading. Eh? This is more of loading, eh? this is more of loading, loading to the machine. Eh? Now, job, these are five jobs. Okay, so that's why you say N equals to five now, eh? five jobs. Two machines, machine one, machine two. This is drill press, this is lead. For example, uh, for example, if you do painting or you do binding, binding work, eh? staple is one job. Stapling or, you know, uh, joining it. One is cutting the paper, join the paper, cut the paper. This is drill, lace. There's two, two different jobs. Job A requires five hours. This requires two hours and so on. Okay. So this is the time required. Time for job A to be done on first work center and so on. Okay, so what does the rule say just now? So the rule said that now we have all the, we have done number one, list of the jobs and time for each work center. Number two is choose, choose the job with the shortest activity time. If that job is in the first work center, schedule the job first. If it is in the second work center, schedule the job last. So you start with A. The, sh the shortest time is at which work center? The first or the second? Huh? Okay. So this, the work, this is the shortest is at work center two. So what we do is 
assign or load it uh, at the end. Okay, you will see this later. Of this, eh? this is the start. This is um, uh, what do you call early or start. Eh? So this is A is assigned at the end, at the back. B is at machine one. So you assign it at the front. Okay. Then C, C at machine, uh, shortest is here. So you assign it here. All right. Then D, you assign it at the center. Okay. You cross out, then you, you have done C. Okay, it actually finds uh, D first. But anyway, the same thing. If you do D first also, it will actually sign here. So this is the assignment. That means the job is going to be done according to the sequence. B, E, D, C, A. Okay? And it is like this. You go detail. Work center one. Okay? When I assign B first, work center one, it requires what three days or three hours for that for that mentor. So this is actually time eh? zero until three. B is done. Okay. So B is already completed at uh, work center one. So this is work center one. It's flow like this. Eh? No, no. <laughs> you have to complete work center one. So it's E requires seven days or seven hours. Eh? So the flow is from three until 10. So B, E, B, E, D, C until A. Okay. So this machine have already completed all the jobs starting from time zero until time 33. Because that's you know, the time required. But the sequence is this. B, uh, the work center one is completed. Then only you can do the next job. Okay. So that's why B can only start after, a is com uh, after work center one is completed for the first work center. For the first, first job. B, job B at work center one, completed at time three. Can you start at work center B, which requires six times, six hours from time zero? You cannot, it's impossible. You haven't completed the drill. You haven't completed this part of the drill. So you can only start at time three for B, okay? Same thing at for E, of course, this is this is what we call as idle. Okay, it is called idle time. Idle time means what? Idle means idle means machine not doing anything. Okay, machine is not doing anything, right? So this is Johnson's rule, which is required for loading uh, jobs at two work centers or two machines. This is not completed yet. So B, you understand why E can only start at time 10? Okay, why? Why Liam? Why B can only start at time 10? When is B, when is E going to start for machine one? Uh, machine one. Time three, right? Yeah, it's time three. Okay, it requires seven. Requires seven. Seven hours or seven hours or seven days. So it will complete ten. on day 10. Okay, day 10. So day 10, then only E can start for the machine to job. Yeah. Okay. So e, that's why we have this idle time. You know, see this orange color? This is all idle time. This has done be completed. Okay, this is completed. Okay. This is completed whereby 
the job is actually uh, okay it's completed at uh, time uh, 35 eh? okay it has another one free time eh? one uh, let me see um, any questions any questions so so what you do what you are trying to show is what you're going to load on the machine okay you're going to load on the machine beginning from uh, if you look at just one machine machine a machine one so you will start from the job b then job e job d job c job e okay and uh, for machine uh, two uh, work work center two it has some idle time. It cannot start immediately. It needs to just have some uh, lateness. Then only we are able to start it. Eh? Okay. Right. It's uh, you know, Jacob. You need to go to another class. I know. So yes, professor. So I'm I'm trying to uh, finish up. So if you can go uh, and do, you know, for some exercise, I want you to try out 15.4, 15.5, three questions, 15.5. If you don't do this, you won't be able to apply and at least see the, uh, what do you call, uh, not 15 fine 15 15 15 and also 15 23 okay so these three question this is on assignment problem this is on four priority rules this is johnson rule any questions please com uh, uh, can you see the homework again <laughs> I, okay, I, I, I mentioned again, 15.4, 15, 15. 15.4, 15 15.15, and also 15.23. I put it in the, I'll post it in the WhatsApp, okay? I'll review this a little bit next lecture because okay, it's a bit you, fast eh? <coughs> before we start the other topic. Any questions? 15.5. 15. 15.15. 15. 15. 15. Okay. Not 15.5, 15.15. Okay. We have three homework. Three questions for you to do, yeah, yeah. exercise. Eh? Uh, in group. Uh, in group, in group, yeah, in group. Okay. Also individual also can, no problem. Individual also okay. can. Hmm. Okay. Where, where is Wengjia? Hmm. Is Wengjia here? Yes. Ah, okay. You. Uh, okay. So you give a try because I know there's a lot of, you know, new concepts. Okay, Professor. Thank you. Okay, Yako. I'll see you next I'm just week. leaving. Okay, thank Happy you. Thank you. Yeah, right. Thank you. Thank so, right. you. Bye-bye. So try Bye -bye. out the exercise, okay? Right. Okay. 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 Think WhatsApp me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 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 Right. Take care.